Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be working on a winter themed spread in my art journal sketchbook. For this spread today I'll be using this set of 36 Everblend markers. This is the Grey Tones collection from Arteza. I have done a full review of these Everblend markers before and I'll, I'll leave a link to that video in the cards if you're interested in more information about these markers. The set today has a variety of grey and neutral tones. The markers are really nice to use, they blend really well and I wanted just to stick to these colours in this set for the spread today. This is not a sponsored video but Arteza did send me this set to use in my project and I thank them for supporting my channel. I also have my new journal, it was sold as a scrapbook but I'm using it more as a sketchbook art journal. I also have a colouring page here from my new winter colouring pages collection and there's a link to that in the description box below as well. And I'll also be using a paint pen, a fine liner and a pencil. I'm going to start with the colouring page and use that as the focal point for my spread. I've printed out the snowdrops design in a smaller size. All the pages come with the designs in a full page and then a roughly a half page size. I've printed out the snowdrops onto 180 gram cardstock so that the paper will be able to handle the markers. The first step was to go in and lay down a flat layer of colour, making sure that there is enough contrast between the different areas. I'm not planning on adding too much shading so I need the different sections and elements to be able to stand out from each other. Arteza has titled this set of colours 36 grey tones and there are a selection of warm and cool greys in the set but there are also some colours that are much more blue, green and beige. Everything has a muted or grey undertone but there are definitely more than just traditional greys in this set and that made it fairly easy to colour in this page and to find enough different colours to use. Focusing on contrast was important and I used black behind the snowdrops to push them forward so that the pale colours of the flowers would stand out. The markers worked really well and I got nice smooth colouring a tip for achieving that, and this tip will work with any alcohol based markers that you might have, is to make sure that when you're colouring you overlap your strokes. I tend to work in small areas, working one area at a time and always making sure that my brush strokes are overlapping, going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards with the brush, overlapping all the strokes and that usually produces pretty smooth and streak free colouring. After the first layer of colour was finished, I went in and added a few shadows, mostly running a darker colour over some of the lines. I didn't do too much blending here as I wanted more of a contrast between the lighter and darker areas and I wanted a more painterly unblended look as well. After the shading I added in a few highlights with the Posca paint pen. Once I was finished with the colouring, I then trimmed the design and cut off the excess paper so it would fit better onto my journal page. I followed along the wavy border with my scissors and cut the snowdrops design out. Then I brought over the journal and I used double sided tape to attach the colouring page to the right hand side of the spread. I like gluing colouring pages into a scrapbook, a, an art journal or a sketchbook as it's not only a good way to store the colouring page after I've finished it, it gives it a home, but it's also really nice to use a colouring page as a starting point for an art journal page and then to build the rest of the page design around it. Especially if you're not sure where to start when you're starting an art journal spread like this, then using a colouring page as a starting point might be useful. I'm now going to design the rest of the spread to work with the colouring page and add in different elements, starting with a couple of lines to make a strip and then I'm going to colour in that strip with a flat layer of colour. I want the strip to look as if it's running behind the colouring page so it pushes the colouring page forward a little bit off the background. 
To fill up the rest of the space on that side of the page, I added in some little hanging ornaments. They don't really have a name, I'm just adding in some drawing and some doodling to the page and then once I've sketched them out, I'm outlining and then colouring them in. I then turn the journal over to work on the other side of the spread. Whenever I'm placing marker directly onto the journal pages, I have a piece of scrap paper that I'm placing behind the page that I'm working on so that the markers don't bleed through onto the other pages in the book. Paper in this journal is quite thick, but the markers could still bleed through, so I'm just using my scrap piece of paper to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm starting off this page by using my ruler to draw some lines over in the upper left hand corner. I roughly filled in those lines with some different colours and then went over that with the black fine liner and a paint pen to add some doodling into the sections. Next I sketched out some more snowdrops and leaves in the bottom half of the page. I wanted to bring in the flowers again and to tie this part of the page in with the other side. If you're incorporating a colouring page into a spread like this, then bringing in similar motifs, themes or colours from the colouring page into the rest of your design will help to make everything look really cohesive at the end. Using a limited selection of colours also really helps with that. I liked using this set of markers today for that reason. I also really enjoy colouring with these muted grey tones anyway, but constantly using the same collection of colours throughout this design really helped to make the finished spread look extra nice. After sketching and outlining, I coloured in the flowers and this time instead of colouring in the snowdrops a pale colour, I decided to use a black so that they were a silhouette against the leaves just so that they were a little different to the ones on the colouring page. I drew in a few banners, each one a little bit shorter in length than the other. I outlined them and then coloured them in. Next it was time to add any embellishments and other elements to the spread. I started with some text. I wanted to add a title to the page and there was a perfect spot between the banners and the snowdrops and I brought out some stickers. I've had these stickers for a couple of years and I didn't have all the letters that I needed so I cut up some of the numbers to make the letter E. I also had this little paper doily and I cut that in half to add to my page. I placed half down in the empty space by the leaves and then with the second half I cut it in half again and I placed one quarter in the corner and then the other quarter next to the colouring page. I then pulled out a few wooden shapes and added them to the spread with liquid glue. I had a sprig of leaves and a few stars. This is my mixed media journal so I like to use lots of different supplies and textures and I'm not worried about bulking up the pages. The book will end up being very bulky when I finished it but that's completely fine. The last step was to add a few sequins to the spread. I really enjoy having a journal or a scrapbook or a sketchbook, whatever you like to call it, like this, to experiment with mixed media. It's a place where I can glue things in, I can sketch, I can colour, I can paint, I can make a mess and have some fun creating. A journal like this is intended to be fun, to be a place where I can be creative and a place where I don't have to worry about getting things perfect. 
Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video today. Make sure you leave me a comment and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future and if you'd like to see me working on more spreads in this art journal. Thank you again for Arteza for sending me the markers to use today and there will be links to them and the colouring page in the video description box if you're interested. Thank you all for watching, let me know if you have any questions and have a creative day.